Hello everybody, today we are going to be doing a quick experiment and busting some myths about stamina. So first I want to point out that uh, we are going to be running the Brewers. I've just made some minor adjustments to this team to the, uh, run our experiment. We're just going to be playing through a couple of games manually. So uh, I've set different pitchers to different stamina levels than what they are in reality. Brandon Woodruff here is obviously higher stamina in real life, but I've set him to 35 stamina. This is going to allow us to identify how long a 35 stamina starting pitcher can go. Corbin Burns here I've set to 80 stamina, which is obviously higher than he is in real life. This is going to allow us to see how long, by comparison, a pretty high stamina pitcher, about the highest you're likely to see, will go. And I've got Freddy Peralta at 25 stamina, really low pitcher, just like the absolute minimum. This is what you're going to see from relievers. We'll see how long he can go. Now, on the relief side of thing, we're going to use just about every other reliever is going to be a decent benchmark. Um... We've got Josh Hader here with really low stamina. On the other hand, guys like Drew Busa with medium tier stamina. Uh, Brent Suter with a little bit as well, so we could see some of them. And we've also got here Devin Williams set to 80 stamina. So we're going to see from Devin Williams a look at uh, potentially what high stamina has to do for relievers. Now, I'm going to say that starting pitcher stamina seems to be very popularized. Uh, a lot of people are of the opinion that you need at least 50 stamina to be a successful starting pitcher. Uh, I know a lot more people are of the opinion that you need at least 40, and I, for the longest time, was in that group. But I'm going to be arguing today that you can get by with 35 stamina and still be an effective starting pitcher. And I honestly don't know how Freddy Peralta is going to do, but he's going to give us a look at how a 25 stamina pitcher can go. And we're only going to be looking at pitch count. I have not modified these guys for performance purposes because that's not what we're looking for here. So we're going to see how guys like Hayter and Williams do in the bullpen and how guys like Woodruff and Burns will do in the rotation. Anyways, we'll get right into it, and uh, yeah, so we'll go through the games. I will bring you guys in at certain points of pitch count, and I will talk to you guys about these pitchers' performance. All right, here we are, opening day against the Twins. Brandon Woodruff is going to get the start. I'm just going to leave the lineups at default. This doesn't really matter. I'm just going to be quickly simulating through each game uh, to see where our pitchers are going to end up. So clean inning for Woodruff. I guess we can just simulate half innings for our team. We don't really uh, care too much about our hitting performance. Okay, so Woodruff set seven pitches so far. Clean run through the first inning. He's really doing well, just absolutely cruising through this lineup. Miguel Sano, Byron Buxton must have stolen second base there, and there we go. Apparently, we committed two errors of that inning. That's pretty funny. Oh, Buxton might have doubled because the Twins scored a run. All right, Woodruff's at 57 pitches, and we can see he's starting to get out of the green, but he's still going strong. He's got plenty of, in my opinion, plenty of innings left, in, or at least a little bit left to go. All right, Mitch Garver is up, and we now have Woodruff at 66 pitches. Garver will line it right at Luis Arias, and now we got the pitcher, Kenta Maeda. Woodruff gets out of the inning. All right, perfect. So now we got Woodruff at 72 pitches, and he's still going. 35 stamina, he's at the, uh, 72 pitches. So here we go. Andrelton Simmons singles to lead off, and we got Jorge Polanco up. Now, at this point, I know a lot of people would normally pull their pitchers. Um, I would kind of be of the mind that it's okay to pull your pitchers at this point, but I'm okay with leaving Woodruff in. I would say that once you get into the red, that's the absolute furthest that a pitcher can go. And that's really what we're trying to measure here. All right, he strikes out Nelson Cruz. And now we've got Byron Buxton again. Woodruff at 88 pitches here. 2-2 two -two to Byron Buxton. And he gets the ground out to the second baseman to end the inning. So Woodruff, he clears six innings. He throws 93 pitches, and he's still not in the red. He's got 35 stamina. All right, anyways, to conclude this game, we're going to bring in... Uh, yeah, he actually went a little bit longer than I thought he would innings-wise. I think let's do... Let's do Devin Williams. Let's see that stamina from Devin Williams, how many pitches he can throw. 
All right, so Woodruff again, just barely, or he's now thoroughly entrenched to that red, but he got there probably 90 pitches. We'll say with 30 stamina, 35 stamina in Woodruff's case, you could throw 90 pitches as a starting pitcher before you get really fatigued. That's impressive. Devin Williams coming in to be our new pitcher. All right, let's see what he's got. 17 pitches, and he's very much in the green. All right. And uh, we've got 34 pitches on Devin Williams, who's still very much entrenched in the green. I'm just going to start by saying that I do not have stamina cranked up. This is not a result of the league having a ridiculous amount of stamina. In fact, uh, let's just pitch around here. I don't want to do pitch by pitch. Let's pitch around. Let's intentionally walk as many guys as we can. Oop. Uh, so that we can see. Oh, that actually struck Sano. Wow, I guess he does do that a lot. We want to see Devin Williams throw as many pitches as possible. All right, so he was still at the yellow. I'm guessing he could have gone 15 more pitches than he did. And he threw 50 pitches. So maybe not 15 more pitches, but he certainly could go 60 comfortably. On the other hand, uh, Brandon Woodruff went 90 pitches comfortably. Maybe not comfortably, but effectively as the starting pitcher with 35 stamina. So we see here that it's very obvious there's huge amounts of pitches that can be thrown by relievers with big stamina. On the other hand, Woodruff, very successful with 35. Hopping into our next game here against the Twins. Uh, we are going to have Corbett Burns on the mound today. So we're going to see if he can't throw a complete game here with his 80 grade stamina. See how many pitches we can get out of Corbin Burns as opposed to uh, Brandon Woodruff. The two extremes on the stamina spectrum. All right, we're just going to go through some half innings here. See what we've got. All right, Corbin Burns at 45 pitches, thoroughly entrenched in the green. 62 pitches, still very green. 74. Now, keep in mind that he's pitched six innings, but Woodruff was at 93 pitches by this point. Corbin Burns is only at 74. He's working much more efficiently than Woodruff was, likely in part because he's giving up fewer errors and just has been effective as a pitcher overall. He hasn't walked very many guys, so uh, I'm sure that's got a little bit to do with it. Strikes out. I'm trying to pitch around so we optimize his pitch count to be as high as possible and of course he's going to strike out the side and just not throw very many pitches when i want him to throw as many as possible come on burns stop throwing so few pitches all right full pound to donaldson that's good he gets the ground ball that's going to be an out now at 96 pitches he's in the yellow so this is about where woodruff stopped this is a little bit after and burns obviously he could still keep going for a while he's uh, he's doing pretty well, but that was to be expected. Obviously, unless stamina literally did nothing. A full count base hit to Mitch Carver. That's great. That's going to allow us to really see Burns' pitch count here. Oh, he stupidly ran to third base and got thrown out. <sighs> okay, well, Burns is at 103 pitches, and it looks like he can keep going. Jose Barrios, he's going to put the ball in play. He's going to be thrown out, and the inning is over. Okay, well, we'll have to take Burns to ninth and see what he's got there. All right, so at 105 pitches, Burns is still very much capable of throwing. Come on, Burns. We want you to not get guys out here. Oh, my God. and He's getting guys out. Okay, you know what? That's it. We're starting to move guys to positions they just should not be in. And hopefully at this point, we will be able to stop him from getting outs. Uh, let's do, actually, let's do JBJ at shortstop, Arias in left, and Jace Peterson. He was already at third base, I guess. Colton Wong has probably never played a lick of third base in his life. There we go. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, yes. Okay. Now let's see you try to get guys out, my dude. Perfect. 110 pitches, and Burns is still capable of throwing. Oh, my God. Is he really going to strike Nelson Cruz out? Of course he did. 
All right, 113 pitches. Please do not get bucked out. Drop the ball, please, Omar Narvaez. Great. Okay, well, we could say that Birds probably would have had 15 or so more pitches left in him. And he threw 115 pitches, so maybe not 15, but probably 10. So Burns, with 100 or with 80 grade stamina, can throw 125 pitches in a game. Woodruff, with 35 stamina, can throw 90 pitches in a game. So there is a difference of 35 pitches, but that's honestly not that much. That's two or two and a half innings for the most extreme cases. We're going to check out a 50 stamina starting pitcher in a little bit, and we're going to see how that compares to Woodruff by uh, comparison to Burns. Now, obviously, having that 80-grade stamina with your high-end pitchers, that's going to make a difference in how long they can go. Burns, yeah, he's going to be able to throw complete games absolutely with his extremely high stamina, but that's not a knock on Woodruff at all. Woodruff is very much capable of going relatively high on that pitch count and being successful as a starting pitcher despite really low stamina. Now we're going to check out the most extreme case. I have never tested anybody with 25 stamina before. Freddy Peralta is going to be a first. So this is really going to be, I knew coming in that 35 plus stamina worked really well as a starting pitcher. But uh, today we're going to see if Freddy Peralta can make it work with only 25. This is basically, does any stamina level really matter as a starting pitcher? Or can anybody really start? All right, well, he's at 32 pitches and already approaching the yellow, so that's not too encouraging. 49, and he's deep in the yellow. 64 pitches, and I'm going to say this is where Freddy Peralta is probably done. Uh, but that's not too bad. 65 pitches out of essentially a reliever type guy with the stamina. I'd say that's honestly worthwhile. If you've got a high end guy and you really want him to be a starting pitcher, this is not that bad. This is four to five innings worth of pitching out of most guys. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I, I'll take that every day. So he technically goes to 75 pitches and is still capable of going at that point. I think that could pretty definitively say that while it's preferable to have at least 35 stamina, anybody can be a starting pitcher. All right, who do we want to see here? We took out our high-end relief for stamina guy and Devin Williams in our first game. Let's bring in Josh Hader, a, a really lower and stamina reliever to see what the difference is. All right, haters coming in, and we'll see how many pitches he can throw at the highest point. All right, so 17 pitches, and he's still in green. 27 pitches, he's pretty thoroughly in the yellow. All right, 38 pitches, and Josh Hader's done. So the difference between Devin Williams at 80 stamina and Josh Hader at 30 stamina, this is essentially... We could try the 35 stamina, um, Eric Yardley, or I guess it was actually Eric Lauer? No. May Phil... I don't remember who it was. Uh, Brent Suter, this is our 35 stamina guy. We could try him next. But uh, essentially what we see here is that the difference in total pitch count between Devin Williams and Josh Hader is not that much bigger than the total difference between um, Brandon Woodruff and Corbin Burns. So my verdict here is that stamina is even more important for relievers than starting pitchers. And the big reason for that is very simple. Relievers pitch more often than starting pitchers. So hypothetically, if you have a reliever with that much more stamina, I'm guessing it's at least as valuable. There's maybe a little bit more of a difference between Woodruff and uh, Burns than there is between Hayter and Williams. But Williams is going to pitch at, if you really need him, every other day. You can... Pitch him, rest him, pitch him, rest him, pitch him, rest him, pitch him, rest him. So that's 81 games. Let's say he pitches 
60 games. That's twice as many games as a starting pitcher is going to be in. And he's getting that extra 30, 40 stamina twice as much as a starting pitcher. So if that's an additional two to three innings, that means that Devin Williams gets that extra amount of time to pitch more frequently. He gets an extra two to three innings for essentially every other game he's in. That amounts to about 50 innings a year more than a starting pitcher would benefit from that extra stamina. And that's really what I'm trying to say here, guys, is that it really is just all about it's all about the quality of your pitchers. The stamina is not nearly as important. If you, It's honestly not that difficult to field a really high-end bullpen after a few years of playing. Uh, relievers are cheap to sign as free agents. They're very easy to trade for as prospects, unless they're really high end and still they're undervalued for the most part. Uh, just filling your bullpen, very easy. And as long as you are filling your innings at a high caliber, it doesn't matter who's pitching how many. Just get the best guys you can. If they are low stamina, so be it. They have no prominence in the rotation. I strongly recommend that you guys are able to look at some of these possible pitching options in your rotation, unbiased Recognize that stamina is a luxury for starting pitchers and that you just need to cover your innings. So losing two innings from a starting pitcher at the most extreme case, that's really not that big of a deal. All right, now we're going to take a look at not Adrian Hauser. Okay, we're going to modify Adrian Hauser's stamina to be exactly average. Actually, no, a little bit above average. We'll see what slightly above average, which is probably what you're going to look at for an average starting pitcher how that compares to 35 stamina. And this, I'm betting, is not going to be that significant. So the difference between Woodruff and a normal pitcher is not going to be very much. So Hauser's at 68 pitches. He's in the yellow. He's at 90 pitches and in the yellow. This is where Woodruff stopped. He doesn't have that much further to go. So Hauser at 103 pitches, and he's done. So we'll say there's a 15-pitch difference or one inning between the absolute lowest you're ever going to really see and the above-average pitchers. So I think I could confidently say at that point, Stanford is just not that important for a starting pitcher. You really do just want to look at almost exclusively at their abilities. And with that, I think I'm going to conclude this video. I hope I have helped you guys uh, hopefully broaden your horizons with what is possible for starting pitchers. Hopefully this allows you to pick up some possibly undervalued high quality guys to join your rotation. And hopefully you guys will all be able to build more effective pitching staffs. I will see you guys on the next video.